Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. Les Atticus has just walked through the door. Les, how are you? Very well, Jeremy, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too. Thank you for all the stuff you've been sending me. I'm, I never cease to be amazed at your, uh, your uh, research department. I don't know where you get it all from. Oh, it's, it's, it's uh, Les Incorporated. Well, I tell you what, it doesn't, doesn't let this program down. Me, myself and I, Jeremy, and uh, here we are, 347 days of the year left. Easter's early this year. Yeah. Only eight weeks to go. Think about that. Eight, eight weeks, weeks before Easter. You could have been buying cross, lot, uh, cross, uh, hot cross buns on Christmas Day, uh, uh, Christmas Eve. Chris, Christmas Day or the cri- well, day, day after. I don't think they ever close the stores these but days, do they? Where, where there's a commercial dollar to be made, yeah, absolutely. Uh, our supermarkets will do it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> interesting also that uh, this year is a leap year and uh, that, that propelled me to think about what, what, what is a leap year actually and it's the, re- the reason is we have a, a difference between civilization's calendar and the astronomical calendar and essentially the astronomical calendar says each year is 365 days and one quarter day. Hence, every four years we add that extra day to bring everything back into line. Well, how did the calendar and the astronomy get out of step? Well, the astronomy obviously was the one that first came about. Yeah. How the human calendar was uh, invented, I'm not quite sure. You'd have, you'd have to yeah, ask. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah. dig that deep into it, Jeremy. No. Didn't dig and the, the custom of leap year is that uh, uh, a woman can ask you to marry her. Oh, okay. okay. Did you know that? No. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a custom, and if you say no, you have to give her a pair of white gloves. Don't ask me what any of that means, but I, I, that's, it's sort of history. You, you, you can connect that with what you were saying <laughs> earlier about your daughter Amber. Yes, this, well. This could be the year. <laughs> it could be the year. Well, she, she should go, go out there and, um, yeah, anyway, I'll keep out of it. I think it's always wise. But I, I was looking also at, um, <clears throat> as you always put up dates and... Uh, landmark uh, issues. It was 41 years ago today that uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak came up with the world's first personal computer. How many years? 41 years ago. 41 uh, 1983. years ago. Would have been a big clunky thing too, wouldn't it? Was, it? Uh, actually, no, it was a fairly compact desktop unit. It was actually uh, called Lisa which they said, they said it was locally integrated software architecture, huh. which is essentially parlance for saying some instructions inside a, a box that will do something for you. <laughs> but many, many people thought it might have been named after Steve Jobs' out-of-wedlock daughter, Lisa. Huh. Oh, well. And that was another interesting story because Lisa was not exactly endeared by uh, Jobs early on. But he did love her, but uh, was very remote from her for many, many years. Yeah, well, children, uh, I don't know. How many kids have you got? Uh, only one. Right. I tell you, I, I, well, yes. The second time around, I only have one. I think you've got to, you've got to um, have less to worry about, I think, if you have one. I've, I've got four collectively, and you never stop worrying about them. Well, I think that's part of... Uh, our family, our community and our connection with people. And that's another issue we could talk about for the rest of the day, Jeremy, how the, the Marxist regimes want to disassociate and disconnect people from mm. their own family, from, mm. from community. Let me, let me get this. Hello? Hello, Jeremy. It's Kath. How ha- are you? Oh, Kath, I am so well. <laughs> Happy New Year to you. The same to you, and welcome back. Les is here with me, so say hello to him too. Hello, Les. Oh, that, that's so nice. I won't keep you because I haven't got much to say because I usually agree with you anyway 99% of the time. Well, look, look <laughs> um, I love your opinions and your comments <laughs> and your comments about the, the podcast and the, uh, the uh, posting on Facebook. Oh, thank you so much. I've got a new phone which my son bought me. Well, it sounds very good, very clear. Well, it sounds okay, but I can't get you. 
I can't get the picture, you know. Oh, okay. Now, so, I think that is a problem at our end. Oh, do you think so? Uh, yes, yes, yes. We're working on it. <coughs> but what, oh, what Tony's okay. going to do is to record everything that we do and then we'll, it'll be on, but it'll be later. Are we on now? It's working now. It's working now. So in, oh, in, it? inexplicable. We don't know why it didn't work in the beginning. But y- No. Anyway, thank you so much. An issue with the streaming platform, whatever that means. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pretend to know what you mean. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much and welcome back. No, um, thank you, Kath. God bless you. You're a top you. man. Thank you. God bless Bye. you. Thank you. She's a lovely, lovely lady. This you sent to me uh, the other day, which I thought was interesting. No reset for Albo. The percentage of people in agreement with the following statements. Australia is heading in the wrong direction. 51%. Cost of living, the number one issue, 74%. ALP slack on cost of living, 81% say that. The ALP won't do enough next six months. What does that mean? I guess they're saying that uh, That, that people (coughs) people have no confidence that the ALP or... No, no confidence. Our Prime Minister will actually uh, do anything to help us. Well, that's almost 70% of people thinking or saying that. Green measures increase the cost of power. Well, I would say that definitely, and so do you, 51%. And that comes from uh, freshwater strategy, whatever that is. Anyway. Look, they're interesting data uh, <coughs> sets, uh, Jeremy, and I think that um, in, in almost everything it's germane to examine why uh, certain things are in place and why, for example, uh, there's a lot of hoo-ha at the moment about the pending, impending tax cuts at the middle of the year. Yes, I wanted to talk about that because um, uh, I, I think if he cuts those uh, after having made a promise and repeated that promise over and over and over and over again, I think he, he, would, be, he, would, be, uh, he would have to have had it as a politician. But, I, look, if, if you distill the tax cuts back and you say what did we have and, what, and these tax cuts are essentially there to replace what we had and there was a low-income tax offset, offset, and that accounted to $1,500 a year. Yes. And that was a, a big amount of money for most people. And they just took it back. And they removed it. That was a big hit on family budgets. Yes. Now, these tax cuts, which have been built to be bigger than Ben-Hur, yeah. in reality, if you're a $200,000 a year income earner... and that's, M- that's, Most aren't. Most aren't, but two hundred thousand dollars a year is a big slab of money. So in five years, you've earned a million dollars. That's a lot of money yes. in anyone's language. Yes. And those tax cuts, actually, for those people in that income uh, earning capacity, will mean nine thousand dollars per annum. But let's let's go back to the people that would mainly benefit from a low income tax offset. Yeah. So these are the people who are probably earning fifty thousand dollars to $70,000 a year. Yep. But these tax cuts will actually mean for someone who is earning $50,000 a year, it'll be a tax cut of $125. And in anyone's language, that's not any money at all. That's, that's play money. And if you start to think about the cost of living, and in this morning's advertiser, they're talking about a pint of beer being $15. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's not yeah. too many pints of beer that your tax cut will just be swallowed up and you'll have not a great deal left afterwards. Yeah. The other point, too, is that the government's been waxing lyrical about how many uh, jobs they're creating. But in December, around about 65,000 people lost their jobs. So that's 65,000 people who were earning. They were able to support their, themselves and their families. Yep. They were out of work. And... These are the real ways that we need to be considering these things. So I, I, I'm, I'm actually saying and suggesting that the tax cuts, whilst the government might be thinking about how good they are and beneficial to most people, they really aren't because it's not a lot of money for most people. If Sure, if you're on $200,000 a year plus, you are talking about meaningful amounts of money. But yeah. for most people, the tax cuts will not make too much difference. No, and the criticism that I hear over and over again is that, 
Why would you want to help the big end of town? Why would you want to give the people, because the more money you're earning, the more benefit you'll get from these tax cuts? But they forget the simple thing, and Tony's mentioned this to me several times. The simple thing is that the more money you are making, the more tax you are paying. It's a progressive system. And the whole thing about the tax cuts designed and legislated all those years ago was about bracket creep. And governments love bracket creep because you just move into another bracket and they take another slice. When in actual fact, I think it was Abraham Lincoln who very wisely said, he was a bit of a lefty, but he was a very interesting man, Abraham Lincoln. He said, money is best left in the hands of the people who earned it. But that's not according to Canberra. No, no, no. But if we have a, a, a corporate rate of 30 cents or 30% and we've got a, a personal rate of 30%, which is what John Howard set this whole thing up to achieve, and a consumption tax of 10%, that is simple, simple. The only people who might be complaining will be the accountants because they uh, were getting a lot of work in yes. sorting out a very complicated system. Yes. Yes. Just keep it simple, get rid of the bracket creep, and if people are earning more money, they, that's OK. They're paying more tax. And, and, Jeremy, many, many people don't necessarily understand the taxation system. And when they think that they go into the next bracket, they actually believe that they're paying that new bracket on all their income. They're not. They're no, only no, no. paying <coughs> on the extra. It's the only the bit jump that takes over. you over, yes. And I've had this conversation with my daughter and she... She thinks taxation is theft. But that's a young person's uh, <laughs> view on things. Well, and, and maybe we think the same way too. Um, it's, what we need to think about is how the, uh, our, our taxes are redistributed. But uh, in reality, uh, it's only that extra that you're paying and it's based on your total year's income. Uh, yeah. And uh, um, I think the taxation system needs a, a major, major overhaul because when you have someone, the former chief executive of Qantas, Mm. earning $25 million a year, Mm. many of us would say he could have paid a great deal more tax Mm -hmm. because most of the money he earned, there was no bracket creep in that. He was paying the top rate of tax, but most of the money was not in an incremental fashion. And that top end of town, the, the top end bracket, has never been modified. It's never been increased. And I think in reality, when you look at uh, the COVID period, which has been a four-year period, the wealth that's been created at the top end of town mm-hmm. amongst the people who admittedly they, they contribute, they work hard, but there's been a significant increase in people's top-end income around the planet. Yeah, yeah. And it wouldn't be an unreasonable comment for some of those people to be paying a great deal more tax. Yeah. And even if it was a five cents extra per dollar, there's a significant benefit to the community if they were doing that because there's more and more off those people who are earning those significant amounts of money. Yep, yep. Les, more from you later. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free. And you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.